Hi, my name's Tom Keish. Sometimes I write and sometimes I publish a blog. And this morning I wrote and this afternoon I published a blog called Vulnerability is a Two-Way Street. I first published it this afternoon under the title Karaoke Bomb. So it's also known as Karaoke Bomb. But I posted it on May 10th, 2012, if you want to look it up. And it's on my WordPress site. Anyway, I originally was going to read it word for word for the visually impaired and post that. But it turned out to be a five-page blog. And quite honestly, when I got done recording all that audio, I just... I just didn't want to edit it, and I really didn't want to post it or, yeah, just blah, you know. So I decided to try something new. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm, I'm more tonight. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it using whatever words come out of my mouth. And if you want to read the original posting, which I recommend, and also contains a bunch of links to different things that I may mention, please feel free to find it. Anyway. I'm in my 40s. I live here. It's a one-bedroom apartment. I'm not married. I'm without children or fatherless mother. No. Yeah, I don't have kids. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, um, I don't work as much as I wish I did, but uh, it is what it is, and sometimes I get frustrated, and sometimes I get bored, and that's all it is, and what can you do? Just remember that for a little bit later. Also, this past Monday in my acting class, I met with, of course, my class. And my teacher challenged us all to learn something new this week. Just anything. Didn't matter what it was. Just learn something new. To mix up our insides, to challenge ourselves, to gain confidence in an area that we've never had confidence in before. Didn't matter what it was. So since that class, I've been trying to figure it out what the heck do I want to learn that I don't know anything about. Also, in that same class, one of the students, fellow classmates, mentioned this video on YouTube and said it was awesome and about vulnerability. So I stored that in the back of my head, got to learn something new, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yesterday. Yesterday was a pretty uneventful day for most of the day. I did my stretching, my little bit of stretching. I did my little bit of writing. I did my little bit of singing. I did my little bit of business work. A call came in for a last minute audition and I drove down to Santa Monica. And uh, quite honestly, I auditioned with um, many smaller sized adult men. That was a joke. Me big, they small. And I went in with three different fellows. And the smallest, which was, smallest man, which who was three foot ten, I believe he said. So, quite the contrast. You'll see where I'm going with this. Anyway, took forever to come back in rush hour traffic, stop into a bar, start talking to this inebriated girl who's trying to convince me to get a dog for my apartment, which means that I won't be so lonely. And I try to tell her that my landlord does not allow dogs, and she says just do it anyway. And then she's spilling her drink on the way to the table, and I'm laughing my ass off. Anyway, I come home. I look up on the computer. I try to find that vulnerability video. I, I just, whatever. I'm bored out of my brain at this point. I check it out. I look at it and I love it. It's absolutely great. It's one of those TED Talks. You, again, you click on the link on the written stuff and you can see it. I like it so much. I post on my Facebook, best 20 minutes I spent today. I like it so much, I get hungry and I start looking up other things by this doctor. I watch another video. It's pretty good. I watch a third video. It's awesome. It's called The Power... No. What is it called? Not The Power Of. See? This is why I like writing. This is like... Anyway, it's in the writing thing. It's awesome. Again, I'm so blown away that a few minutes after the last status update on Facebook, I post... Wow, another great 16 minutes, or something like that. Phone rings, friend of mine calls, it's like 9.20 at night, we start talking. He's trying to convince me to send one of my screenplays to a producer friend of his and wants to talk with the producer and me on the phone. It's like 9 o'clock at night, I've never talked to this guy, I have no idea what this guy's looking for. 
I'm kind of in that moment of or mood of I, ah, whatever, man. I it's I don't know. I just don't want to. And in my head, I'm thinking, what am I supposed to learn? And all this talk of vulnerability and how not being vulnerable takes away power and all this stuff. And I, I just come to this idea that, you know what? I'm just going to go out. I'm just going to go out and I'm going to go to a bar that I sing karaoke at. And as stupid as this sounds, I just figured, wait, a way I can test vulnerability right now tonight is when I go to this karaoke bar, which is a dive and it's usually dead, and I usually just sit in, on the bar stool with the microphone cable stretched all the way to me and he's sing and I don't get up. Tonight, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to get up. I'm going to allow myself to be seen by whoever wants to see me. So, simple enough, right? I go to the karaoke bar. I get there. The bartender and the karaoke jockey, the KJ, Jonathan, they scream out quiche and a few people turn and say hello and I know this guy and that guy and I sit down at the bar and so me and Jonathan, the KJ, we start doing songs. He does one, I do one, he does one, I do one. Nobody else is in the rotation. Nobody, just whatever. And while I'm sitting down, one guy leans into me, says, hey man, I've been here a bunch of times. I've heard you sing a bunch of times. I love your voice, you're really great. Uh, I'm sorry, me and my girlfriend, we can't stick around. You know, We'd love to see you sing all night long. Anyway, so he takes off, another guy leans in who's waiting for his multiple dates, which yes, that's true, two women showed up. That's, yeah. Anyway, um, he's complimenting me from past times too, and it's really sweet and nice, and thank you very much. That's lovely, and I appreciate it. And he starts actually like playing along, like picking songs or asking me what songs I'm gonna do next. Brr. Anyway, um, it's still just me and Jonathan for like five or six songs each, and I just go up to Jonathan. And I say, "Hey, you want to play a round of Karaoke Bomb?" We had talked about it before, but we'd never played it. I, I've played it several times myself, but it's always been with like a small group and it's only been for like one round. But anyway, Jonathan was like, sure, why not? So I blindly pick a CD from his rack of CDs and he puts it in and we blindly just pick a number between one and 21 or whatever the numbers were. And up comes a song that he's never heard before and he just goes with it. And 100% he jumps in two feet and he sells that song and I laughed my ass off and it was just so much fun that in walks a girl who is also another semi-regular and she catches the very, 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 very end of his song and sees us laughing hysterically and the bar laughing hysterically and she wants to know what it is and get in on the action and so we tell her, hey, we're playing karaoke bomb, you want in? She's like, yeah, of course, it sounds great, let's do it. I get up, I do a song. What song is it? Short People. Brilliant. I am by far the most giant person in this bar at this time. I have just come a couple hours ago from an audition with legitimately short people. I would never in my entire life have picked that song to sing in public and yet that's the song that comes up on the screen and totally blind, I sing it 100%, the bar gets into it, it's awesome. The girl gets up, she sings her song. We have so much fun that we decide to do another round of karaoke bomb. Anyway, one of the other semi-regulars who wasn't gonna sing that night, in the second round, he gets up to sing with us. Awesome, right? Awesome, it's fun. Everyone's getting involved, everyone in the bar is getting involved. This group of three guys who come from a Dodger game who just decide on their phone to stop into some local dive karaoke bar, end up coming to the bar that we're all at, never have been there before. They come in, they start looking through the books and then seeing us having such a great time playing karaoke bomb that they just jump in and they're like, yeah, screw it, let's do it. They get in, 100%, they go balls to the wall. It was awesome. One guy, I swear he had four songs that he sang throughout the night. Never once did he know one of the songs he sang, and yet that did not stop him from committing and from just being 100%. And I swear, most of the time, you would not be able to tell that he did not know the songs because he just committed 100%. Anyway, so we're all having a great time, and as people are coming in, they're trying to figure out what's going on, and by about midnight, Jonathan, the KJ, was actually had a rule, nothing but karaoke bomb tonight. It was 
awesome. He was taking requests for songs and saying, look, you take what we give you tonight, and then having other people pick the discs and other people shouting out numbers. And every time on the screen, the song came up. Nobody knew what it was going to be beforehand. And it would come up, and it was like that moment of, God, I, I hope I know the song. But the reality was, the people were saying they really wanted to know the song, but it seemed like when they did know the song, they were a little bit disappointed. Or when it was a song that they sort of knew, they were a little bit disappointed. But when it was a song that they had no idea what it was, or a song that they would never in a million years try to sing. Like, I sang a song, Red Skies at Night. Okay, that is a little bit high for this voice. And that time of night, and after singing that many songs, and I would never, ever, in a million bars, in a, in a, in a million years, I would never sing that song unless it was like six songs on the entire playbook of karaoke. But anyway... It was awesome. It was just so much fun. And it was all about people being willing to be vulnerable. And going back, blah, 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 back, when I was singing those five or six songs in the beginning, and I was singing either songs I knew well or songs that I think I could do well, and there was like six or seven people in the bar, two of which had just directly complimented my voice, and I was allowing myself to be seen, I noticed that nobody was seeing me or choosing to see me, that vulnerability was a two-way street. It wasn't just about me allowing people to see me, but it was also people wanting to see me. But yet when we were playing Karaoke Bomb, which got up to about 20 different people playing at the same time, and 20 different people screaming out and singing along and calling back, whoop, there it is, whoop, there it is. I mean, it was... Laverne and Shirley came on, and the place went nuts, and everybody started singing. And this guy that only sings, like, blues songs and hard rock song, he got the candy man came up, and people were dancing, and like, who can make the sun rise? It, nuts. It was so much fun. And everybody was watching and involved and passionate and just, oh, it was just amazing. So that alone was awesome. But the cherry of it, the, the little bit on top that was even more brilliant, was really late at night, like, I don't know, 12, 1, I, I sort of lost track, way after I would normally have left, in walks this guy that I had met several years earlier, who has worked his way up from casting assistant to casting associate to casting director to now executive casting director at a major network, television network. In he walks with his friends. And I sort of recognize him right off the bat, but I kind of have this overdeveloped sense of responsibility for other people, and I don't want to infringe or impose or get in on his thing and just sort of let him have his night off, and he's off the clock, and I just sort of, you know, if he recognizes me, great. I'll talk. We'll, I, I'd love to talk to him or say hello or whatever, but you know what? If he chooses to not do that, then I kind of want to respect that. Anyway, they come in, they are awesome, they are so much fun, and they start playing Karaoke Bomb. The KJ, Jonathan, he announces my name again, and uh, he's gotten to this rhythm of when he calls me up to the microphone, he usually says, and now it's time for quiche. Which, it's funny, and then a lot of people scream, quiche, and I don't know why or when that started, but it started, and it's funny. Anyway, as soon as he says quiche... The casting exec looks over at me and like darts across the room and shakes my hand and like, hey, how you been? And I say, oh, it's great to see you. And I recognize you. And then he starts getting on me that I didn't say hello. That, that he would have been totally flattered if I had come up to him and said, hey, and told him how I recognized him. And he totally knows who I am. And he starts introducing to me. He starts introducing me to his friends about, oh, this guy's awesome. He's a, such a talented actor. He's been in this and this and this. And, you know, we start talking and I do my song and it was great on so many levels. First off, if I, if we didn't play karaoke bomb and allow ourselves to be vulnerable, I would have left by 11, 11 o'clock maybe after I did like six songs or had a couple beers, I probably would have just took off or it got crowded. But I was having so much fun. The other thing is, when a casting exec walked in, 
if it was the way it was, I probably would have gotten my head about what song should I sing or how do I, what what will make me sound good or what could I do well that maybe he'll remember in the future and I can get cast on a TV show or a movie and blah 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 and doesn't really matter and so when the karaoke bomb came up and I had to sing some song that turned out to be an Elvis song but I had no idea that and I just dug in and just sang gritty and bluesy and just ripped it up as much as I could just had so much fun it's like I didn't worry about any of that. And I just had fun. And he and I ended up talking, just shooting the shit while the bar was closing. He gave me his business card and uh, told me to send him my newest demo reel and let him know what I've been doing. And But it's not about that. It's not about, it's not about oh, I made a connection with a casting as director, assistant, or associate, or executive, a it doesn't matter. It's not about that. That's not what this blog's about. This blog is about the fact that allowing ourselves to be vulnerable in this dive karaoke bar, two of us, Jonathan and I, the KJ and I, other people wanted to join in and take risks. And it, it became uncool to even think about putting in a request of a song that you could sound good with. That it, it was almost more fun to take the chance and risk of sounding horrible or sounding brilliant with something you had no idea what it was or making it up as you went along or, or just dancing. And, and honestly, I was bouncing up and down and singing up there. Uh, stuff just not my normal Eeyore perfection self when I sing or perform and it was just awesome so it wasn't about the casting exec it wasn't about any result it was about connection it was about the vulnerability between people and I have said goodbye to many many people in that bar over the past I don't know dozen 12 14 years I, I don't know how long that I've been bopping in and out of there but last night when we were saying our so longs, these people, some of who I've never met before, have seen before, and some people that I've seen for a few times or whatever, it was like this connection, like friendship, this bond, this, it was awesome. Anyway, it all came from this idea in a class, this idea of a video, watching this video on vulnerability, watching this other video on invulnerability, taking a chance, going out, putting myself out there, risking it, allowing myself to be seen, allowing others to see me, having other people want to see me. It, it, it was such a successful night that they want to do it every week now. They want to do karaoke bomb every week. And I honestly, I don't know if they could ever repeat the magic that was there that night. And if they do, great. If, if they don't, great. But I am so fortunate that I was there that night. I am so fortunate that things lined up the way they did. And the lesson, the, the lesson. Now, whether or not that counts for my teacher of learning something new, I don't know. But vulnerability. Anyway, it's not really exactly these five pages, but that doesn't matter. Vulnerability. Key shout. Bam!